About a year ago, we decided that we wanted a sawmill. We researched it and then finally made that decision to order a sawmill, and I decided on the HM126 from Woodland Mills. Saw a lot of good reviews from their customer support, and also the price was in the right neighborhood for us. We added two extensions to what came with the mill, so that gave me a length of 26 feet. We ordered the mill on a Monday, received it on a Friday. The mill took a few days to put it together, and I was going to put the track on some concrete blocks on the ground and then mill some lumber to set the track on permanently. That didn't work out, so I went to the store and got pressure-treated wood. One of the mistakes I made was mounting the track directly to the pressure-treated wood because that will cause it to rust a little bit prematurely. I'm gonna come back and put a non-treated two by six in between the pressure treated lumber and the footing. On leveling the track, what I did, I got a level, did the best I could, and then get a string and go from one bunk to, all the way to the end. That gave me the assurance that every bunk was flat and aligned. And also, I think I had too much lubrication coming out of the tank. It was just shooting out. It is suggested that it's just a few drops of lubrication on the blade. Remember, this is not a commercial mill. This is an entry-level mill. Honestly, I think it's built really good for a homesteading type mill. When we assembled the mill, it was very heavy, especially the saw head part, but it came along pretty quick. Did take about two to three days, I believe. Each size bolt was in a little pouch and it was labeled. The book was pretty thorough and the mill went together really good. Now I saw some videos saying they had some problems with the engine. I have not had any problem with the engine. The engine usually starts on the first or second try and the frame really seems to be solid. It does not wiggle or rock or anything like that, which is really good for something that just came in a crate and you had to put together. One of the problems some people mentioned was this part clogs up. This really seems open enough that the sawdust flows through. You probably should clean it out after you use it each time and that would help as well. And also there is an hour meter on it. The hour meter operates off of vibration. One thing that was a little confusing to me at first was the blade tension. On this model, the blade tension is supposed to be two and a half to three full turns from snug. Now, snug could mean different things to different people. So it worked out better for me to use a torque wrench. That way I know it's at the right place every time. One of the main complaints I have about this sawmill is the track. Once you get this track leveled, it should be okay. But these joints did make it a little bumpy and it's hard to get these things adjusted. So I am going to ask the factory if they'll send me these little side brackets that mount here. I do wish they would have sent these little brackets ahead of time when I ordered the sawmill, but I am going to call support and ask if they'll send those. I did not order the tow board, but the tow board I use is a jack from Harbor Freight. This jack is a little too big. I think I'll go back and get the smaller jack, but it's just a regular scissor jack to adjust your log up so you can get it just in the right place. These log clamps actually work pretty well. Log stops are pretty simple. They send you two log stops. These are the shorter ones. Have a little notch here so these shorter ones don't go down. One thing I wish they did do on these longer log stops, it would also be nice if it was a little notch there. I think I'll go back and weld something there. These screws will allow you to square this log stop up with your bunk. Now for the motor. I've heard some people complain about the motor, but honestly, I haven't had any trouble with it. It usually starts the first or second time. Only problem I've got is with Kohler, you have these little, this is the fuel cut on and off, and this is the choke. With this little plastic knob, it's real easy to bump that, and I'm scared that will get broke. I wish Kohler would have designed that different. I'm thinking about just flipping this around and making the crank on the other end. The air filter is pretty easy to take off. When you're fueling up, and this is probably with any sawmill, make sure you wipe off around the gas cap before you take the gas cap off so sawdust doesn't get in there. An extension when you change the oil. 
There's your oil dipstick. I believe I did see someone that had a little trouble finding the instruction manual. The instruction manual comes in this tube right here. The way the saw head is lifted up and down are these cables and a winch on the other end. These little gaskets are pretty snug. There is an adjustment procedure in the manual for that. I do keep some grease on this that's safe for plastics. Hopefully you won't need this anytime soon, but this is the adjustments for the tracking on one of the wheels. Here is one of my biggest problems, and it's not really the mill, it's just the fact that it is a manual mill, and that is this little winch will wear you out. I am planning on doing a modification for this and putting something in motorized. I've saw a few different options online. Here's the pointer. This is the, one of the rulers that are magnetic that comes with it. I added a digital readout. It makes it a lot easier for me. And as you'll see, it tracks just along with the pointer. One thing you need to make sure after you put it together that this little piece is in the right angle because I did have one little instance where it wasn't quite angled enough and I did accidentally hit a log stop. So you'll want to make sure this is right at the right angle where it'll hit that log stop if you forget to put your log stop up. It has a water tank on it for lubrication. This little nozzle was a little tricky to get adjusted correctly, but once you get it right, it works pretty well. Right now, I just have water in it and this tube gives you a level of how much water you have. It's automatic, it's controlled by your throttle, and it is suggested that it's just a few drops of water. If you put too much lubrication on it, you will run the risk of your blade sliding off. You have three clips holding this, and then there is a screw that goes in there. Undo these clips. After I adjust my tension, I do spin this to make sure that this is in the right place. I'm noticing that the blade is tracking just right over here, but over here it's not. These are the bolts we'll adjust. There's a bearing behind this blade. You wanna make sure it doesn't, it's not supposed to roll that bearing. It's supposed to be just a small amount in front of it. The manual shows how to do those. It's supposed to be about the thickness of a thick piece of paper. The only thing I was actually missing was the set screws. Uh, two of them fell out. And right here is where the water comes out, drips on the blade, your clutch, pulley, Check all your belts. Here's the wheels that go on the track. One thing you'll want to do is make sure these little pieces of wire, you just kind of bend them back. That keeps the trash out of it. I do try to keep spray some grease on these. One of the things I did at first was cut these eight by eight timbers out and made a place to put my logs, log bunk, so I can just roll the log on. We can use the tractor to put the logs onto the track. I wanted to be able to have them off the ground and also pressure wash them and get them ready to roll onto the mill. I've got a log here that I wanna try, see what's inside it. Unfortunately, the pine larva already found a home into the log. I'm gonna see if there's anything in here I can use. I need to measure to get this center of the log in the correct position.
Well, we have a cant now. Ended up with a cant about 14 and a half by 13, and it is a little rounded. So I'm gonna make two by sixes out of this one. I ended up getting about 12 2 by 6s out of this log. The mill cuts really good in my opinion, and I haven't really had any problems with it. So I would definitely recommend it for a starter mill or maybe a mill on your homestead. If you're in the market for one, you might want to consider the Woodland Mills HM126. If you've had some experience with the Woodland Mills HM126, please leave your comments below. Also, if you got any value out of this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you for watching.